Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a deck formerly known as 8-Rack, now redubbed 10-Rack as we're playing 10 The Rack Effects. It's a mono-black discard deck that uses these Rack Effects as win conditions since they deal damage based on how few cards your opponent has in their hand. And Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage is a nice addition from War of the Spark that fits perfectly in this archetype. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here, starting out with our discard, of course, at one mana. We've got the full four copies of Thoughtseize as targeted discard that can take anything that's not a land and costs us two life. And then the full four copies of Inquisition of Kozilek that lets us take any non land card with convert mana cost three or less. And then we also have four copies of Raven's Crime, which makes you put on discard a card of their own choice, but it also has a retrace, so in the late game we can discard a land and replay Raven's Crime from the graveyard. And then we also have some cheap removal in the form of Fatal Push to destroy any creature with Convert Mana Cost 2 or less. And if we enable to Revolt, Convert Mana Cost 4 or less. Then we get to some of our win conditions where we have 4 copies of the Rack, which use our opponent as it enters the battlefield. And then on their upkeep, the Rack deals X damage to them, where X is 3 minus the number of cards in the opponent's hand. So if they have 0 cards in hand, the Rack deals 3 damage. If they have 1 card in hand, 2 damage. And if they have 2 cards in hand, 1 damage. And very similar to the Rack, it's Shrieking Affliction, which says they lose 3 life on their upkeep if they have 1 or fewer cards in hand. So it does a little bit more damage if they're holding one card, but it doesn't deal any damage if they're holding two cards, as opposed to the rack. Then at two mana we've got some more discard in the form of a wrench mind, which says the opponent has to discard two cards unless they discard an artifact card. So against any non-artifact based deck this is pretty efficient discard spell. And then we also have the full four copies of smallpox, which doubles up as discard, removal and land destruction. Since each player loses one life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature and then sacrifices a land. We also have to sacrifice a land, but of course we're not playing any creatures ourselves. So it's mostly asymmetrical and will hurt the opponent more. And then we also have one copy of Liliana's Triumph to make the opponent sacrifice a creature. And if we control one of our four copies of Liliana of the Veil, they also have to discard a card. And then also one copy of Collector Brutality as a pretty versatile removal and discard spell. And then at three mana we get to our Planeswalkers, where we have the full playset of Liliana of the Veil, which can force the opponent to discard a card every turn, and can also double up as removal, making the opponent sacrifice a creature, and the ultimate can also be game winning. And then our three copies of Davriel, a Rogue Shadow Mage, which is our additional win condition besides the Rack and Shrieking Affliction, since at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, if that player has one or fewer cards in hand, Davriel deals two damage to them, and the minus one forces the opponent to discard a card, so we can make the opponent discard up to three times, if we have a backup Davriel or we can just keep Davriel in play at one loyalty to use it as a win condition. And then taking a look at our mana base, we also have the full four copies of Mutavolt which can turn into a 2-2 creature, so that's another way for us to close out the game. And four copies of Field of Ruin to deal with opposing non-basic lands, and to help us turn all these colorless lands into swamps, to help us cast all the double black spells and all the single black spells in the same turn, we also have the full play set of Urborg, which is legendary, so that's one drawback. But between the Raven Scrimes, the Retrace, and Liliana making us discard as well, we can usually make use of additional copies of Urborg, and then a whole bunch of basic swamps as well. Then taking a look at our sideboard, we've got two copies of Nile Spellbomb as Graveyard Hate. We've got three copies of Asylum Visitor, which shines in the control matchups. Once we take out some of our dead removal spells in the main deck, we can replace them with Asylum Visitor. The opponent might also have taken out most of their removal, and that means the Visitor will stick around and provide a ton of card advantage, as well as helping us pressure the opponent. We've got two copies of Plague Engineer as a new addition from Modern Horizons, which is great against any tribal creature strategy. We've got two copies of Bontu's Last Reckoning as a powerful sweeper effect for just three mana. One Cry of the Carnarium, which is another sweeper that also exiles any creature that dies to it. And then we also have one copy of Ashok, which prevents the opponent from searching their library with various effects. It doesn't stop the search from Field of Ruin, but it does stop opposing fetch lands, and it also doubles up as Graveyard Hate. And then also the full four copies of Leyline of the Void as a very powerful Graveyard Hate card. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we won the die roll, but I'm gonna put the opponent on the play. Theory being that we want to empty the opponent's hand as quickly as possible, so letting them draw an additional card goes against our game plan. Definitely times when that can come back to bite us, but uh, we'll try it out here. Alright, so what do we think of this hand? It's not very good, triple Liliana, only one land. We'll try to go to six here. Alright, this one I can get behind. And don't need another swamp. So we've got our turn 1 Inquisition, turn 2 Brutality, and a win condition with the rack. 
It's going to be a tap to Blood Crypt from our opponents. Let's have a look with Inquisition. And looks like we're up against the Hogak Vengevine deck here. So probably just taking the Altar. So we're probably going to lose the first game, and then we have a shot after sideboard once we bring in all the Graveyard Hate, since this deck can be pretty explosive. Although at least we were spared the turn 1 Faithless Looting, so it's going to be hard cast Blood Gas for now. So I don't necessarily want to Brutality to kill the Blood Gast, since they can just get it back. I guess we can Inquisition on the off chance that they picked up something that they didn't play. Although there's also a risk that Inquisition is going to hurt us if we end up discarding a card that uh, they want in the graveyard. Alright, Neonate's a good hit. And then we'll play the Rack. Could have been worth it to just play the Field of Ruin, because now the opponent can tap their fetch lands for black mana with our Urborg, and they could maybe sand back some fetch lands to get back Bloodcast later. Alright, so opponent's just gonna hit us for two. So opponent's not really doing what the deck is supposed to do, which is play very early Hogax and make zombies with Bridge from below. Smallpox. Do we even want to cast it here? I guess it still gets rid of a land, so it gets them further from hard casting a Vengevine. So what's the play here? Do we just play Liliana and Plus? Yeah, that could be okay, I guess. They're probably just going to discard one of their creatures that come back. But any other play here is kind of mediocre. And I'll get rid of the smallpox, keep the brutality to maybe kill the bloodcast. At some point, put on discards a bridge from below. That's not what we wanted to see. Swamp the draw. So what are we doing here? Do we want to escalate our brutality for some reason? I guess I'll start by using Field of Ruin to kill their Blood Crypts, get a Swamp, and then I'm going to Brutality just to drain for two, and plus Liliana once again. We are kind of helping the opponent by making him discard, but as I've said, we're probably going to lose game one anyway, and then hope to get a better shot after sideboard once we bring in all the graveyard hate. Since right now we're kind of enabling all their synergies, Vengevine coming back from the graveyard, Hogag they can also cast from the graveyard, Bridge from below they actively want in the graveyard, so we haven't done ourselves any favors by making them discard, but it's kind of the only thing our deck can do at the moment, so didn't really have a better choice. Blood Gas is gonna go face. Mutavolt the draw, that's actually reasonable since that's also a way for us to get rid of the Bridge from Below in their graveyard, since if our Mutavolt dies, then we get to exile it. So we'll play Mutavolt, plus Liliana. Put on discards Hogak, so we don't have any information about their hand. The Rack deals 1 damage. They have 5 cards in the graveyard besides Hogak, and 1 creature, so they can't quite play Hogak. Put on Sacks the Bloodstay Mire for a Blood Crypt, which is going to be tapped. And Gravecrawler. So now they might be able to play Hogak. Convoking, tapping Gravecrawler and Bloodgast. Of course the Fetch Land putting an extra card in the graveyard. And uh, it's going to be difficult for us to deal with the 8-8 Trampler. Do have a Liliana in play, but our opponent has two creatures and the Vengevine's also going to come back. So they had just enough to save the Vengevine from getting exiled. And yeah, the Vengevine can just kill the Liliana on the spot. And the fact that we have a Mutavolt doesn't matter anymore. So Vangevine attacks, do we want to chum block for some reason? I'll just let her die. And we're going to be dead in a turn or two. And then we get to go to sideboard, where we get to bring in quite a few graveyard hate cards. Davriel makes them discard. So they will be taking 4 damage here from Harak and Davriel. But that pales in comparison to the 16 damage our opponent's gonna deal us. So let's see here. The two powered creatures are going after Davriel, so we can't save Davriel even if we sacrifice the Mutavolt. And then we would be taking 12. Even if we chum the Vengevine, I don't think that helps much. I don't think we have any outs with our opponent still at 10 life. So let everything happen. 
Like, we can attack them for two with our Mutavolt. The rack only deals one damage. And Shrieking Affliction isn't gonna help since they still have two cards. So yeah, I think we can pack it up. Alright. Let's go into our sideboard here, where we have two copies of Nile Spellbomb, Ashiok, for Leyline of the Void, and then Crime of the Carnarium could also come in handy. Do we want Bontus Last Reckoning? It could be okay if they manage to put a Hogak in play before we get our Graveyard Hate online. Um, Plague Engineer can also get rid of Zombies, so it's also a consideration. What don't we like? Fatal Push can kill some 1-drops, but overall is pretty weak. Smallpox also isn't great, since their opponent can function on very few lands. Liliana's also pretty poor. And what else is bad here? Liliana's Triumph isn't great. Brutality also doesn't do much, so we do have quite a few dead cards. Raven's Crime is also pretty risky. But we probably want to keep some amount of discards just to make our different rack effects functional. And then... We'll bring all these cards in. I guess we'll bring in two Plague Engineers. So it's either a Reckoning to deal with Hogak, Fatal Push to deal with maybe a Carrion Feeder, if that gets out of hand. Could play the Smallpox anyway in the hopes of kind of mana screwing the opponent. Or we could play some of these Edict effects, but they likely have some random Sacrifice fodder in play anyway. I think I'll go with the Reckonings and give this a shot. And I don't think the Asylum Visitor is really what we want in this matchup. And do we want to be on the play? That's an interesting question. We're going to basically be mulliganing towards our Graveyard Hate anyway. So at that point it doesn't really matter who's on the play. Yeah, I think I'll let my opponent be on the play. And yeah, this is a keep, a double Leyline of the Void. So even if they have one way to deal with an enchantment, we have a backup copy. And then Affliction plus Raven's Crime should get the party started. Turn one Blood Crypts into Gravecrawler, so our opponent's basically on the mediocre creature beatdown, which can definitely still win games, and that's why we boarded in all those sweeper effects, so that if we do have the Graveyard Hate, we can still deal with what our opponent is uh, presenting. We'll lead with the Thoughtseize, see what they're working with. And they're working with a lot of creatures. Double Carrion Feeder, Bloodcast, Looting and Neonates. So, what do we take? The looting's pretty bad now that we have Leyland of the Void in play. So I might just take the Neonates, which can be used to maybe get rid of a bad card in their hand, and is also just a creature that beats down. Yeah, sure. So not the most impressive turn 1 Thoughtseize, but we gotta hope to find one of our sweepers at some point here. This is one of those situations where we wouldn't mind having access to Fatal Push. But in general, it's not going to be great here. Our opponent is missing a second land so far. So they're just going to go for the looting. Maybe you look for a second land. And let's see what they exiled. Bridge from below got discarded as well as shenanigans. And our opponent's just going to play a carrion feeder off the second land they found. Fair enough. So they still have a carrion feeder in their hands. And I think a bloodgast. Which they're going to try and hardcast. Not our Field of Ruin doesn't do us any favors, so we'll Raven's Crime them. And then we could retrace the Raven's Crime, but it's probably better just to get the Shrieking Affliction in play, so we start clocking the opponent as well. And right now we would be racing 3 damage for 3 damage, basically. And our opponent took a bit of damage off their lands. So yeah, we'll get the Affliction in play. And then we can start retracing Raven's Crime to make sure our opponent's hand stays small. So the Affliction damages them. Opponent got rid of the Bloodcast, so they still have a Carrion Feeder in hand. Now that they have two creatures to sacrifice to the Carrion Feeder, if we draw Cry of the Carnarium, for example, they would be able to get a Feeder out of range. Another Swamp. Opponent's empty-handed, so no point in retracing the Raven's Crime. And do we bother Field of Ruining them? I guess I will. It does make it less likely that the opponent draws one of their basics as their draw step, but it might also mess up their mana in the long term, since we have a second Field of Rune incoming. So I'll kill the Blood Crypts. Get a Swamp. It also decreases the chances that we draw a Swamp for the turn, 
So thinning out our deck is also relevant. Well, their opponent did get a forest, so now they can cast their green spells. I doubt they have two basic forests in there, but it might be for Vengevine hard casting. So we'll take four. So pretty even race so far. Both at nine life. Gotta hope to find something relevant. And Plague Engineer is pretty excellent here. So we can name Zombie, opponent sacrifices both Zombies to the Carrion Feeder, but now we have a 2-2 Death Touch in play. I guess we can also retrace the Raven's Crime here. Discarding a Swamp. And then we'll play our Engineer. Alright, so we managed to deal with their Graveyard. We managed to deal with their creatures. And we have a Shrieking Affliction as our win condition here. And our opponent packs it up. Alright, sweet, so... On to game three. Got to hope for a very similar hand in game three, basically. I think I liked our sideboard plan. Just hope to hit them with the graveyard hate, and then we've got all these sweepers to clean up the small stuff that they're left with. All right, what about this hand? No graveyard hate, but we do have a cry of the Carnarium, which can exile some number of creatures. So this is a close one. Opponent already went to six. They might be looking for a way to deal with our graveyard hate as well. I think this hand is probably good enough to keep, even though we don't have any Graveyard Hate, hopefully we can find some of the cheaper Graveyard Hate along the way. And of course, Cry of the Carnarium, if it lines up well, can also be pretty devastating. Turn 1 Blood Crypts, into Neonates, so we'll lead with the Inquisition. And our opponent has Nature's Claim to deal with Graveyard Hate as well as Assassin's Trophy, so this hand was very reactive in terms of dealing with hate, but it just doesn't do much by itself. Bloodgast, we could sweep up with a cry. So what are we even taking? I guess Assassin's Trophy as the more relevant of the removal spells. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So had we mulliganed aggressively for a Leyline, for example, our opponent would have had two different answers. So that's why sometimes keeping a hand without graveyard hate can still work out fine if the opponent is in turn mulliganing aggressively for answers to graveyard hate. So we'll take one. And opponent discards a bridge from below and makes a zombie right away, so that's pretty good value. And then a looting that they must have found with the neonate draw, discarding Vengevine. And a blood gas coming back as well, that they discarded, so that bridge from below draw definitely did a lot for our opponent. Carrion feeder as well, so now in response to the cry they can get feeder out of range. So things definitely got out of hand that turn. Opponent is down to one card, so we can make them discard the Nature's Claim here and then play Affliction. But we're facing a pretty real clock. And our opponent can get the Carrion Feeder Blood Gas Engine online as well to start making more zombies. So the Crime of the Carnarium might not be enough here. Let's see what opponent drew for the turn, or if they decide to keep it in hand. Can always retrace the Raven's Crime if we really want to. Our best draw is probably something like a Plague Engineer. Opponent found a Neonate, which they can sacrifice to its ability, but they can sacrifice to the Carrion Feeder and make another zombie. And wow, Plague Engineer off the top. So how do we want to sequence things? Yeah, let's just cry. And then hopefully the Engineer can uh, help us out once the dust settles. So our opponent sacrifices Bloodgast to Carrion Feeder, putting a counter on it, making a zombie. The zombies are gonna die, but they can of course sack those to the Carrion Feeder as well. Opponent sacrifices Neonates, makes a zombie. Carrion Feeder grows, and then we'll probably see them sacrifice all the zombies to the Carrion Feeder, make it even bigger. And then Plague Engineer can hopefully trade off thanks to Death Touch. So there's a lot going on here, but at the end of the day, our opponent's left with a 6 6 Carrion Feeder and still has a Bloodcast and a Bridge in the graveyard, which are both problems. Affliction puts them to 12. We're gonna take at least 6, which means now the Bloodcast will also have haste if they find a land. And next turn we could retrace, but it looks like our opponent's going to play out their last card, which was a Stitcher Supplier, Milling, Neonate, and two lands. So Plague Engineer naming Zombie. Opponent can sack the Supplier as well to the Carrion Feeder, or they can just let it die and get a 2-2 Zombie from the bridge. So we will play the Engineer here, naming Zombie. 
and then our opponent can sacrifice the supplier to the carrion feeder to make it one bigger but then once we trade off the plague engineer for the carrion feeder our opponent will still be left with a bunch of zombies that will now be 2-2 again so still don't love our position that turn where the opponent drew the bridge was pretty bad for us so we'll name zombie and say go at least we do have a mutavolt as well that can help out and then we gotta hope to draw more shrieking affliction type effects to speed up our clock Gravecrawler comes back from the graveyard, dies instantly to the Plague Engineer, but our opponent still gets a zombie from Bridge. If we manage to trade off Plague Engineer for Carrion Feeder, the Bridge will also get exiled, but our opponent will still be left with a whole bunch of zombie tokens. That now will be 2-2 again. So yeah, not a great spot to be in. Gotta basically draw another sweeper effect to clean up all these zombies, and then we still have an entire graveyard to deal with. Gravecrawler comes back once again, now that the Plague Engineer is gone, it gets to stick around. Vengevine comes back since our opponent casts two creatures. We can retrace the Raven's Crime. Discard another bridge, didn't want to do that. Alright, so we can block with our Mutavolt, and then still take eight. So we did get our opponent down to six, but yeah, as you can see, without Graveyard Hate, the matchup is pretty difficult to win. So yeah, really needed to draw a piece of Graveyard Hate in the meantime. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Do have a Thoughtseize, a Fatal Push, a Rack and an Affliction. Only one land, but I think we can keep. We're on the draw, so we're pretty likely to find a second land at some point. And we've got all the things we need. Alright, Swamp. I think I'll lead with a Swamp over Urborg in case this helps them out. And then we can lead with the Thoughtseize. See what they're working with. And they have Opt, Mana Leak, Spell Snare, Essence Scatter. So they seem to be a mono blue deck, maybe a Delver deck, featuring the new triple blue instant. So we don't care about Essence Scatter. I guess Mana Leak is the card we care about the most. And then Spell Snare doesn't counter or one drops. Sure. Put on Fires of the Opt. We've got plenty of answers to creatures. So if they ever do find a Delver, we're fine. And next turn we maybe get to just play Rack plus Affliction. I guess I would rather resolve the Rack right now, since they still have a lot of cards in hand. Alright. So now we need to find a way for them to discard cards. So Liliana, Davriel, those would be great. Even a Raven's Crime could be okay. Mutavolt is also decent. Do we want to Brutality the opponents? I guess that's fine. Trade it for a Spell Snare. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, on to sideboarding against the mono blue. How do we want to approach this one? Don't exactly know what their win conditions are, but I assume Delver of Secrets is one of them. Do we want Plague Engineer? Probably not. I, I think I do like Asylum Visitor. That seems like a fine addition, as I don't expect a ton of creature removal. Probably want to chill on the smallpoxes a bit if we bring in the Asylum Visitor. And I don't expect too many creatures. We still have Liliana. Brutality, Triumph and Fatal Pushes to deal with smaller creatures as well. Can always add a Nile Spell Bomb, maybe disrupts a Snapcaster Mage. Could be fine. I think I like everything else. Alright, we'll try this. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We've got a turn 1 Inquisition, the Rack has one of our win conditions, and then also a Mutavolt, which is pretty important. Field of Ruin probably doesn't have a ton of targets in this matchup, is my guess. Wrench Mine could be pretty good too. So we'll have a look. Gets Flusterstormed, the new addition from Modern Horizons. Alright, that's gonna counter the Inquisition. Hopefully Wrench Mind resolves, although they could have a Spell Snare to counter it for one mana. Opponent is stuck on one, so that kind of makes it even more likely that they have a Spell Snare. So it might be better to just Raven's Crime them twice, discarding Field of Ruin. Discards Crypto Commands. Play a Swamp, Retrace, discarding Field of Ruin, and discards the new Charm. Alright, well, next turn we can go Ranch Mine plus the Rack, maybe. Opponent does find Second Island, and Spreading Seas or Swamp. Alright, so now we're unable to play Ranch Mind, and unable to play Liliana, so that's a bummer. But we draw a Swamp anyway. 
All right, this is going to be pretty good. Discard two, play the rack, deal two damage. Still have a Mutavolt and a Liliana in hand. And we protected the Mutavolt from the Spreading Seas as well, which is relevant. Discards Mana Leak and Islands. So I guess your opponent drew an Island from the Spreading Seas and discarded it. Makes sense. Well, now we've got a win condition in play. We're about to drop another one. Second Spreading Seas. They might regret that once we play Mutavolt. Although now we're unable to play Liliana. More Swamps. I don't really want to play Swamp and then discard our Mutavolt. So I think we'll just play Mutavolt and then say go. And then next turn we can play Liliana maybe. Serpent only takes one here. Still better than if we had a Shrieking Affliction in play. Otherwise we wouldn't have dealt any damage. So do we just attack with the Mutavolt here and then play Liliana? I think that's probably safer. Although if they have something like... A spell pierce playing Liliana first could be better. Alright, I guess we'll play Liliana first. And gets mana leaked. Can't pay for it. But we can attack for two. And then we can keep the swamp in hand for retrace. So we still get a good use out of it. So don't hate our spots. If we ever draw one of our more expensive cards, we've got plenty of lands in play. Happy to draw more discard, more... A rank effects, and we can always use lands with our Raven's Crime. So we'll start by retracing. Discard Spell Snare. Can retrace again. Discard Spell Pierce, and now we'll attack. I imagine they'll have Snapcaster Mage in there, so they could always try and ambush the Muta Vault. But our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Alright, sweet, so managed to beat a mono blue. On to the next one. Alright, we won the die roll, but I'm gonna put my opponent on the play. And this seems like a keeper. Two different rack effects. Davriel as well as another win condition. And a thought sees to kick things off facing a turn one elvish mystic, so up against elves. Alright, this could be a tough matchup, game one, but after sideboard, we get quite a few powerful tools between all the sweepers, plague engineer. And I'm gonna just start with the Thoughtseize. Maybe take away one of their lords. Their hand is Court of Calling, Archdruid, Mystic, Shaman, so probably gotta take the Archdruid here. Which otherwise makes an obscene amount of mana. And we don't have an answer for it. I guess we accidentally turned on Shaman of the Pack with Urborg here. So that's unfortunate. Now they have access to black mana where they didn't have before. And our opponent drew an Azuri for the turn, which is pretty good too here. So their hand is Mystic, Cord, and Shaman. I guess we get to Ravenscrime them and then play a Rack to deal one damage. Or we could retrace the Ravenscrime, not sure if that's worth it. Opponent discarded Cord of Calling. I think I'm just gonna play a Rack. Since I don't care about the Elvish Mystic too much if they play that here. And then maybe next turn we can retrace Raven's Crime and play another rank effect or two. And somehow try to outrace them. So they play the Mystic. And it's going to be Dwinnan's Elite. That's a good one. That's going to power up the Shaman, although we can discard the Shaman with maybe a Davriel or a retrace on Raven's Crime. Not sure why Azuri didn't attack. Fatal push the draw. Don't quite have Revolt enabled. So we can't kill Azuri unless... We attack with a Mutavolt and they trade, then we get to Fatal Push Azuri, but we also want to make them discard this Shaman. Not sure if it's better to play Davriel or retrace Raven's Crime here. The appeal of playing Davriel is that we don't have to discard our land yet, and we soak up a bit of damage. Although being able to retrace and then play a rag deals a bit more damage. I think I'm gonna play Davriel. Opponent's gonna take 5, and then next turn we can unload our hand. Opponent just drew a land, decides to play it out. So they could activate Azura's ability and then get in for 5, 10, 14. So not quite lethal. And let's see if they try and kill Davriel. If they don't, then next turn we have 9, 10, 11 damage, so we're a little bit short of lethal. If we draw another Rack Effect, then we might have lethal. Or if we draw a land, we get to attack with Mutavolt. And then still play both rack effects, so let's see, four. I guess we're one point short. 
because we can attack for two, another two from Davriel, and then nine points with Affliction and the two racks. So we're just one point shy of lethal. There's no way we can enable Revolt here for Fatal Push, since Davriel's still at two. If we had a Davriel at one, we could minus one to put it in the graveyard, enable Revolt, kill Azuri, but I guess we would still die to the rest. Even with Mutavolt blocking, I guess we could survive, go to one. All right, well. Put them to 12. So we just needed to draw another Shrieking Affliction or another Rack, and that would have been enough. But still a pretty decent performance here for game one. After sideboard, it should get quite a bit better for us. Opponent's gonna attack, and that's gonna be game. All right, on to the next one. So how do we want a sideboard? Basically bring in all the three mana sweepers and the Plague Engineer. Don't think we want anything else. What do we take out? Liliana of the Veil's pretty weak. Opponent is emptying their hand for the most part anyway. And the Edict is pretty bad if they have a bunch of 1-1s in play. Same with the Liliana's Triumph. Smallpox is medium, but it can also get rid of a land. Sometimes the elf opponent has to keep a land light hand, relying on mana creatures. And then we can hit them with a the smallpox, making them sack a mana creature and the land. So I'm actually going to put myself on a play, just so we can smallpox uh, one drop mana creature they play on turn two potentially. Brutality is pretty good, since it can be used as removal and can take away powerful instants and sorceries like Court of Calling and Collected Company. Fatal push is pretty good. So yeah, we'll try this. And we'll be on the play this time. Sometimes you want to have your opponent on the play. I don't think this is one of those matchups. Sadly, no black mana, so we'll have to mull and dig for those sweepers as well. Alright, no sweepers, but I think we gotta keep. And then hope to draw one soon. Fatal push could be okay, but we already have smallpox. So I'd rather just dig for another swamp. And we get to Inquisition in the meantime. So what do we do if their hand has a single one mana mana elf? I guess they have two of them and a clan caller and then a collected company. So we could take one of the one drops and then hope to draw a swamp and get the other one with a smallpox. Or we can take the clan caller as kind of the anthem effect. But we could slow them down quite a bit by just taking the mana elves. And then uh, they're going to be further away from casting the collected company in the first place. So our hand needs a bit of help, but uh, we have the tools in our deck to get there. It's going to be a turn one Guild Leaf Palace, revealing the mystic we knew about. And we found a Davriel instead of a Swamp. So we'll Raven Scrime and play a Rack. Opponent's probably just discarding a land here. And then we got to hope to draw one of our sweepers soon. And Dwinna's Elite revealed, that's a good draw. But if we find one of our sweepers, it's not too bad. But now the smallpox is basically turned off as well. So that's not a great plan. So yeah, we're pretty much all in on finding our sweepers, but we also still need a third land. So that doesn't bode well for us. And there's Urborg, a turn late. Yeah, the difference that makes, because otherwise we would have been able to kill the Mystic. Opponent can play the elites to make a token, and they return behind, but now both of these plays are pretty bad. Can make him discard with Davriel, deal one damage with a rack, so we might be better off just animating the Mutavolt and then block, but they're gonna play the clan caller. So I guess that's the plan. Keep back Mutavolt, that's gonna force them to an extent to play the clan caller to pump the team, so they can get past the Mutavolt, and then hopefully we can top deck a sweeper to clean up everything. It's a bit of an ambitious plan, but I think that's the best we've got. So there's a Blooming Marsh. Opponent could also just attack with the Elite and an End of Turn Company. But then we're kind of in the same boat, just hope to draw one of our Sweepers. Alright, they will attack with a Warrior. So they're basically saying I'm gonna top deck a Lord with my Company, which I guess they're pretty likely to. I think I'm still gonna force the issue. And hope they don't find one. Or if they do, that we find a sweeper soon, and the land to cast it. Alright, there comes the company. Let's see what they hit. 
Shaman of the pack and a Dwinnens Elite. Alright, that's a lot of damage. But we will get to kill the 1-1 at least. And then hope to draw one of our sweepers. Got two Plague Engineers, two Reckonings, and a Crowd of Carnarium that we're drawing towards. If we would be on the draw in this matchup, we probably don't like Smallpox as much. And we replace it with something else. But the whole reason we wanted to be on the play in this matchup is so we could Smallpox them on turn 2 and kill their Mana Dork. Inquisition can take the Clan Caller. Their hand is Heritage Druid and Clan Caller. We'll take Clan Caller. And uh, say go. So how much damage are we taking? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we can block a 1-1 one, one with a Mutavolt. So I guess only 8 damage. And then again we got to hope to top deck. Put and drew an Arch Druid off the top. That's unfortunate. So do we have to chum block? But if we have to chum block then we can no longer cast our sweepers. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, we have to chump the Shaman of the pack here. But then I don't see ourselves uh, getting out of this. Because even if we draw one of our sweepers, we can't cast it. Oh well. Needed double blank on two, and then needed to find a sweeper, basically. And none of those things happened. And Inquisition... All right, GG's. That's going to do it for this game. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.